right, going live now. Great. Just going to reef. There it is. Awesome. Okay. I can see it on YouTube, and I can see that we continue to have more folks logging in. Okay, which is excellent. So I'll go ahead and Welcome everyone. My name is Carrie Rose Pace. I'm the Director of Communications for GRTC. I do have to issue the obligatory statement before, before we get into the meat of the meeting, but we will be respectful of your time. Uh, we are gathered here for a public meeting, an update on the planned September service updates for this year. To protect the safety of meeting attendees, this meeting is being conducted through electronic communication means pursuant to and in compliance with the City of Richmond Ordinance Number 2020-093, adopted April 9, 2020. This meeting is open to participation through electronic communication means by the public and closed to in-person participation by the public. As you can see or hear necessary GRTC administrative staff and presenters are assembled electronically for this meeting, which is being conducted by video conference via Ring Central. But video and audio of this meeting is also being streamed live on YouTube. I can see that we do have some viewers with us this evening. It will be available for viewing later uh, at this YouTube page for Ride GRTC or it will be at ridegrtc.com. I will also be posting the meeting materials that will be presented during the meeting on our website after the meeting at ridegrtc.com. Okay, so I think I have done the obligatory announcements. I am also recording as a backup now on my computer just in case. I'm the Director of Communications. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. This meeting will end by 6 p.m. earlier if we don't have any other questions. It's totally up to you if you would like to show your camera. Uh, you do not have to, uh, but we will be keeping everyone muted just to keep background not, um, sound down while we are presenting. Uh, but at any time you have a question, don't hesitate to pop it into the chat. Uh, once we get to the Q&A period, you can unmute yourself. I'll be monitoring the microphones as well to keep an eye on who has questions. And for those of you watching on YouTube, if you have questions, you can post them in the chat. I will be popping over to monitor that as well. Okay, it is now 5.03. You are all now officially Ring Central experts if you have joined to Ring Central. And I would like to introduce Emily Del Ross. She's our acting director of planning and scheduling. She'll be providing the update for you on the plan service updates. I will be muting myself, but I will still be here. I'll be looking for your questions, uh, taking note of them so that once uh, Emily is done with her presentation, I am ready to, to have those questions answered for you. Okay, Emily, take it away. Thanks, Carrie. As Carrie said, my name is Emily Delroth. I'm the Acting Director of the Planning and Scheduling Department here at GRTC. Um, so I'll be taking you through our uh, planned service changes for September 2021. Um, and like Carrie said, uh, we should have plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. So I'll go through all the content um, and I'll, I promise I'll, I'll be somewhat fast, so you'll have time. Um, so just to give you an idea what I'll be going over, um, each of these I'll go over in detail, but I'll be talking about the Route 20, Route 77, the 3B and 111, uh, the 3A, B, and C, the Route 12 and 14, and the 29 Express. And all of these changes that I'll be talking about are planned to go into effect for September 12th, um, 2021. So diving right in, um, the Route 20, this is a routing change. Currently the route goes through Scott's Edition. Um, it uses West Marshall when it's headed northbound and West Clay when it's headed southbound. Uh, we've received repeated feedback from our operators um, that they're having difficulty making the turns through Scott's Edition. Um, and that's due to some of the infrastructure changes that have been happening in the neighborhood, as well as just increased um, pedestrian activity in that area. So to address these concerns, we plan to utilize Arthur Ashe Boulevard um, in both directions. So this reroute would eliminate some of those operational challenges of turning through Scott's Edition. Um, as part of that, we would be removing two stops. So in this map, you can see um, 3681. That's the stop that's currently on Marshall. 
and 3638, that's the stop that's currently on clay. Those two stops would be removed. Um, you also see in this map, um, stop 469 and 399, both are on broad. Um, those stops will no longer service Route 20. Uh, the Route 50 does still go by those stops. So those stops will remain and they'll still service the Route 50. They just won't be serviced on the 20 with this change. Uh, we will be reactivating two stops. Um, so that's 20, um, sorry, 283 and stop 286. Um, and that's at Arthur Ashe and Broad and Arthur Ashe and Clay. Those are actually stops that we have used in the past um, when we did travel down Boulevard. Um, so we'll just be reactivating those in the same location um, that we utilized before. Moving on to the Route 77. So the Route 77, we will be detouring. Are you uh, we'll dialing 694090? I think that's Between it. Robinson and Harrison. And instead we'll be using Cary Street eastbound and Main Street westbound. So this detour comes in response to low ridership that we were seeing along this portion of Grove. Um, in an effort to optimize the ridership of this route, we are moving forward with this change on a temporary basis. So this will be a six month detour, uh, during which time we will continue to monitor its performance uh, before we make any permanent routing recommendations. Uh, the new alignment will do a few things for us. So we'll still provide service where it's currently being utilized most. And you see that um, mainly at the U of R and VCU campuses. And that's really, those are the two main destinations. They have the highest job density, um, we also see, we will also remain on Grove Street to the museum district where we are still seeing ridership. Um, this detour will also increase service frequency along portion of Maine and Cary, um, which is currently being serviced by the Route 5, um, which has a 15 minute frequency. So with the added service, you'll see frequency up closer to about seven minutes um, in this portion. Uh, during the detour, uh, four stops, so two at Lombardi and two at Meadow, um, as well as one stop in Gro at Grove and Robinson, which I'll show you in a little more detail in a moment, um, will be covered. Um, they'll be covered with notices stating that the stop is out of service. So giving you a little bit more context. Um, so like I said, the two uh, main destinations on, on this route will remain U of R on the western end and VCU campus on the eastern end. Um, and you can see in red, that's the portion that we will be detouring off of and we'll be using Cary and Maine. And we do recognize that we have quite a few riders who work at um, Retreat Doctors Hospital. Um, so just wanted to give a little bit more detail there. I mentioned we were getting rid of um, a stop at um, Grove and Robinson. And really that shouldn't have too much of an impact on our riders who are accessing Retreat Doctors Hospital. There's actually a stop on Robinson already. It's 2122. Um, it's just around the corner from the one we're getting rid of. And really it's only a couple hundred feet. Uh, the reason we've actually decided to keep the one on Robinson, that also services um, the Route 20. Um, so we're just getting rid of uh, kind of a duplicate stop and anyone using or trying to access Retreat Doctors Hospital, um, they would be able to use 2122 eastbound and they'd be able to use the stop on Grove, which is 1123 if they're going westbound. Moving on to Route 3B 111 extension. So this extension actually encompasses um, two changes. Uh, the extension of service on what is currently known as Route 111 um, is part of this change. So currently this route runs from the Food Lion on Route 1 Richmond Highway in Southside uh, to John Tyler Community College on Route 1 in Chesterfield. This change would actually extend service one mile further south into Chesterfield County to Precon, which is located on Route 1 um, Richmond Highway. And it would provide transit service and access to residents in the nearby Greenlee mobile home community, which is just south of Precon. The second part of this change would be making the Route 111 actually part of the 3B. 
Um, so this would allow riders, uh, this would allow for a one seat ride for someone who was maybe a Chesterfield resident and wanted to travel all the way into the city or vice versa, where currently um, that would require a transfer. And, and this is a cost neutral change. And it was identified as a priority in the regional transportation plan. Um, and it's a short term solution, uh, which is kind of part of a larger project to continue service along Route 1. So to give you a little bit more context here, um, these maps might be a little bit difficult to see um, on your screen at this scale, but just kind of generally on the left, you can see um, 3B is shown in green and the existing Route 111 is shown in red. Um, and you can see on the right, we are extending to 3B. Um, so you'll see the Route 111 is kind of absorbed into the 3B. And for a little bit more detail, this would be the turnaround. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be extending south to Precon. Um, so that is about a mile south of John Tyler Community College um, and just north of the Greenlee Mobile Home Community that I mentioned. Um, another change impacting the 3B, this is actually a, has impacts to the 3A, 3B and 3C. Um, this change comes in response to the state's effort to rename Route 1. So GRTC will be following suit and we will be removing references to Jefferson Davis Highway and we'll be replacing with Route 1. So in September, you'll see um, all our digital references swapped out. Um, that'll impact uh, the headway signs that you see on buses, um, any route names, stop names and stop announcements on the bus. Um, stop names and route names in the app and um, anything in print as well. So our public timetables, um, our system maps and our um, any kind of neighborhood route map. Um, then we'll be doing kind of a second phase implementation of the switch uh, where we'll actually be changing out the physical signs at the bus stops. So the image that you see on this slide is an example of one of those three A blades that you would see um, on a bus stop along Route 1. Um, and you can just see this in, as an example, the Route 3A, formerly known as Highland uh, Jeff Davis Harwood, will be switching to Highland Route 1 Harwood. Um, next, uh, changes to the Route 12 and 14. Um, this is actually a bay change. Uh, we'll just be swapping bays for these two routes. So. Currently, you'll see Route 12 utilizes Bay H and Route 14 is in Bay J. Um, we'll simply be switching um, so that Route 12 will be in Bay J and Route 14 will use Bay H, as you see here in this diagram. Um, and this is just for operational purposes. It gives our operators of Route 14 a little bit more distance to be able to turn left onto Lee. Um, the Route 29 Express. So uh, the Route 29 Gaston's Express um, has been operating on a reduced service schedule during COVID due to decreased demand uh, or ridership as with our other express routes. Um, in September, we will be continuing to operate with a reduced service schedule, um, but we will be reinstating four trips back into the schedule. So you see those um, highlighted in green here two trips in the morning and two trips in the evening. Um, and this is just in response to capacity issues and that we're beginning to see increased ridership on this route. And finally, um, our Title VI analysis. Um, these service changes have all gone through GRTC's Title VI process and none of the major change metrics were triggered. And that's all I have for you. Happy to take any questions. Okay, thanks, Emily. While you were presenting, we did get uh, some questions coming in. I have been logging those. Thanks, everybody, for your patience while I was multitasking. Haven't had any on the YouTube stream yet, uh, but don't forget if you are watching on YouTube, you can type your questions into the chat and I will get to them. Um, we do have questions uh, about Route 111, Emily, that we want to make sure that we address. There are questions about Greenlee and how the bus stop 
uh, with selected uh, relative to the community. Um, so I'll read the questions. I'll take the initial step and then I'll pass it on to you, Emily, for the rest. So the question is, and this is coming from Chad Beck. Thanks, Chad. Uh, will there be a bus stop at the Greenlee community, which you answered, Emily, it's not uh, right at the community. So then the follow-up question is, how far is it from the bus stop to Greenlee and why was it not extended to the community's entrance? Uh, so Chad, I'll take the first part of that answer. Uh, in coordination with Chesterfield County uh, and Greenlee community uh, with GRTC, we did review several options for placing a bus stop on property with Greenlee. However, it was Greenlee community's owner's preference that we find an off-property bus stop solution. Uh, and so that's when Chesterfield County partnered with helping to identify alternate options. GRTC went down to assess the locations for bus turnarounds, bus stops, uh, to identify the safety of the possible alternatives as well as the usefulness of the alternatives. So I'll let Emily answer the rest for the pre-con uh, final selection. Sure, so the stop, as you can see um, on this map, even though it's very high level, the stop is not actually back in pre-con property, it is along Route 1. Um, so it's, this map probably doesn't quite do it justice, but it, it is quite close to the Greenlee community. Um, and there is a sidewalk connecting that area. Okay, great. And then Chad had the follow-up question, uh, which was, were the Greenlee residents consulted? I know that the owners uh, were heavily involved in this process. Okay. Yep, and it is, Chad, just, just so you understand, the stop location is subject to the private property owners, um, regardless of, of what anyone else may provide for feedback. Ultimately, that right uh, goes to the property owners to decide uh, what permissions they would allow for uh, stop placement on their private property. And that's true of any private property within the network. And Carrie, I would just add to that that there were some kind of infrastructure challenges as far as the turnaround at uh, the Greenlee community itself. So that was when um, Chesterfield helped us reach out to Precon and they were very supportive of transit um, and helped us actually the infrastructure and just how their driveway is set up um, worked quite well for us. So. That's kind of why it ended up where it did. Okay, great, thanks. And and I think you mentioned this, there are, <clears throat> excuse me, sidewalks connecting where the bus stop will be to the Greenlee community as well. And that was part of the consideration when selecting that, that bus stop. Okay, great. Uh, otherwise in the chat, we've had um, some thanks from people who are in attendance about the uh, 77 adjustments, but we've also had some other concerns and questions about the bus stop signs themselves. What will happen to the bus stop signs on 77? Um, I think you mentioned, Emily, that they'll be covered, um, but what, what does that really mean? Um, will, will, when we say covered, are we going to go ahead and remove them or will they still be in place? Uh, what happens? Sure. So. You're right, Carrie, they'll be covered with, uh, we have kind of a vinyl cover that we'll put over the whole bus stop sign um, that will cover the no parking sign as well. Um, and the plan is that we're not going to remove them initially. Like I said, this is going to be a six month detour. So we're going to keep the stop inactive and covered with the sign um, and we'll continue to monitor route performance. Um, and then at that point, if it's determined that we'll permanently um, taking service off of Grove between Robinson and Harrison, that is when we would actually um, uninstall the sign. So until then, they'll be covered. Um, they won't be serviced by buses, um, and our no parking sign will be covered. Okay, very good. I'm going to pop over to YouTube and make sure I haven't missed any questions there. Don't see any over on YouTube. Um, I'm also going to check and see if I'm missing any raised hands amongst our Ring Central attendees. Um, don't see any, uh, so you are welcome to either drop questions in the chat uh, or you can unmute yourself and, and just ask your question. It's a small enough group that I think we can logistically handle that. Um, while we're waiting for any new questions, I'll let you know I've already posted uh, this presentation uh, onto the website so that you can see it and check it. Um, if you're on my email list specific to the Route 77 group, I'll be sending you a link to this presentation as well after the meeting. 
Okay, great question coming in from Mathis. How will you monitor usage on Route 77 if the stops aren't being used? Uh, Mathis, let me make sure I understand. Are you talking about the detoured bus stops uh, that would be on Main and Cary for the Route 77 or the temporarily closed bus stops that will be um, not in use on Grove? The temp this one came in from chat. Can you hear me? Or not? Hey, Mathis. Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Go ahead. What you were talking about how you'll be monitoring it, but if they're no longer being used, how are you going to monitor it? Are you going to basically compare the usage on the detour route compared to what the prior route was and see if you have better usage on the new route? Yes, yeah, I can do that. that is exactly it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Emily. yeah. We'll continue just like we were looking at our ridership um, at each stop while we were using Grove, Grove Ave. Um, we're going to continue to monitor stop ridership um, at the new location. And really, we're just making sure that this change um, is showing good ridership. That means that we're serving the population that we're intending to. Okay. Thank you. So you're exactly right. We're going to continue to see how the ridership changes, um, what the detour is in place, um, and we'll continue to check in to make sure that um, we're that we're serving the community. Okay. Thank you. That was a good question. Uh, okay. So we have another question. This one's coming in also about Route 77. Um, what will the detour do to the trip time, Emily? Um, and will it be a longer trip time for those who are connecting at the more popular locations uh, at BC's Monroe Park and also at uh, University of Richmond in the West? So it won't change the frequency of the route. And the, we will post a, a new schedule um, that will have that change in there, um, but it won't change the frequency of the route or how long it takes you um, on that route itself. Okay, got it. All right, I'm just checking for any new questions. So thanks everybody for your patience while I make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, I'm not seeing anything new in the chat. I'm gonna look for any raised hands. Okay, don't see any and I'll pop over to YouTube and don't see any questions over on YouTube. Oh, no, I'm sorry, stand by. I do have a question. Jeremy, I have not forgotten about you. Okay, so we have a viewer question coming in from the YouTube side. This one's from Jeremy Rice. What will you do with the old 3A bus stop signs? So what I think Jeremy means is for the name change, what's going to happen to um, the blades that, that will have to have the name change updated? Okay, so that would be kind of, like I mentioned, phase two of us swapping out the um, blades, the existing blades with the new updated blades that say Route 1. Um, we'll start the process in September. Um, there's about a little over, I think, 88 stops um, that have blades that need to be changed. And some of those stops, of course, have multiple blades. Um, and we only have one bus stop technician. So it might take us a little bit of time to get everything swapped over. Um, and that's why right now we're just saying that we're going to begin that process in September. Um, and you'll begin to see those new blades out there in the system, but it'll probably take a little bit for us to get every single stop, um, every blade cleaned up. So you'll see brand new blades out there. Okay, great, thanks. And thanks, Jeremy, for asking that question. All right, don't see any others coming in on our YouTube page. And by the way, all the questions and comments that have been either submitted in advance or happening right now during the meeting, I will also be posting those uh, on that public meeting page so that people can see them later. Okay, another Route 111, soon to be 3B um, question. This one's also from Chad. Uh, do you offer transmission for the meetings for Spanish-speaking residents? Yes. 
we do offer accommodation, including for sign language uh, requests we can accommodate as needed. Um, I do remember in 2018, for example, how we did have a couple of meetings where we did have requests for individuals with uh, American Sign Language interpretation and we did have a, a translator on site. Um, we have not yet had any requests for Spanish translation though during our meetings. Uh, we do those specific for uh, our routes with higher concentration of Spanish speaking uh, riders and residents usually offer materials that are delivered to their locations bilingual. So we offer them in English and Spanish. All of our materials for the Route 111 when we launched it uh, just last year were bilingual. So when we put door notices on residences, one side was in English, one side was in Spanish. Uh, all of our digital ads, English and Spanish, uh, we did actually air television commercials that were entirely in Spanish um, and targeting the Route 111 service. Uh, so we try to customize and communicate the information in the language that's more common uh, for those who will be most impacted. And we will be doing, uh, actually one of my teammates is on this meeting as well, Ashley Mason, she and I will both be going out this summer ahead of the September changes along Route 1 in Chesterfield County to make sure that people get the updated information about the bus becoming a one-seat ride, connecting them all the way up farther into the city of Richmond from Chesterfield County, and making sure that they know about that number changing from 111 to 3D, that it's still the same bus going to the same places, just more places than what they were getting on the Route 111. That's a great question, Chad. All right, I'm going to double check, make sure I haven't missed any other questions. And for those of you who are, are with us and watching, uh, you do not have to linger longer if you've gotten your answers. I will be uh, making sure that this video is posted uh, to you by email and you can check it out on our website later. Uh, but you are absolutely welcome to, to hang out and ask more questions or just listen to the Q&A process. We really appreciate everybody for participating in this. Okay, I don't see any new questions on YouTube either. Okay, very good. And I'm also going to check for any raised hands for those in Ring Central who may have questions. All right, I'm just scrolling back up to make sure I didn't miss any in the chat from earlier in the presentation. Okay, I have not. Okay, well, we'll take this uh, pause in questions uh, to let you know what this is on the screen. Uh, if you do have other questions or feedback, uh, and it could be about anything beyond uh, these routes that have been presented, if you have scheduling feedback or routing requests, uh, stop infrastructure needs like a bench or a shelter or a trash can request, you can submit those right here to planning comment at ridegrtc.com or you can just call customer service. We'll take down the information, refer it over to the planning team. Uh, if you still prefer uh, sale mail, we do accept mail as well. Letters, feedback uh, to the planning division at our south side location, which is 301 East Belt Boulevard right here in Richmond. Okay, great. I had some good feedback, Dexter. You'll want to hear this one, uh, that there was uh, someone who wanted to participate, but they had difficulty downloading the Ring Central software, and we're looking at what other formats might be used. That's exactly why we do the YouTube option as well, because we know that not everyone is going to want to download another Zoom-like software, and we do know that Ring Central can be um, a challenge if you don't have all the computer settings set up just the right way. Um, I will say that our team is already looking ahead to when we will be able to offer a more of a hybrid meeting opportunity where those who wish to be physically in person once we can do that again uh, will be able to participate in person at a location while still live streaming it uh, through a streaming platform. It will probably still be Ring Central, uh, but we will plan to sustain YouTube as the simultaneous live streaming live chat opportunity uh, for people who are not participating through Ring Central. 
Dexter, uh, if you're still there, I don't know if you had any other IT feedback that you thought I should share in addition to, to what I just did. Nope, that was it. Okay, Dexter says uh, we covered it there. All right, so let me see if there's any other questions coming in. Well, I would like to, for those of you who are still lingering with us, um, I would like to share some of the comments from those who could not attend the meeting um, for, for the benefit of everybody here. Um, I, I will share the ones who said that they couldn't attend and wanted their feedback to be heard. Sorry, let me make sure that, that I didn't miss one. Okay. And again, if you have a question, don't hesitate to um, interrupt me at any point uh, with your microphone uh, unmuted. Okay, so here's some of the feedback that we received in advance of the meeting. Uh, this one comes from Teresa. I will not be able to attend the meeting, but I would like to mention that I live on Grove and the buses are always empty uh, whenever I see them and I'm a daily walker. It could be due to COVID that they have fewer riders, perhaps one bus going in one direction on Grove and a Hanover bus going in the opposite direction may help. Uh, maybe a smaller bus going up and down Grove uh, could, could be an option. Um, so I support GRTC and know it's important for our city's future. Uh, so what you'll see when I post these comments, for example, is you'll see them in entirety and then there'll be a column for GRTC notes where I answer that the detour that we're using is on Main and Carry, not on Hanover um, as, an op as an option, and then answering the question about the bus stop. Uh, we are, I do want to make sure because this question did come in in advance about smaller buses, we are generally looking anyway at our vehicle assignment and what we can do uh, on certain routes that may have tighter turns or narrower streets to utilize uh, smaller vehicles that may be easier or more nimble to, to move through those areas. So that, that's definitely something that we're looking at more holistically uh, across the network to see where we can best place those smaller vehicle resources and, and use the bigger buses uh, where that demand is definitely there consistently. Okay. Um, this one's from Una Lochran, um, who has also been participating in, in meetings over time. Um, again, I'm not going to read all of these in, in their entirety. I will be posting them in full, but just for the benefit of the group. This is one, Emily, that, that I think is worth mentioning since we are still talking about long-term planning as well. Okay, so from Una. As a resident of the lower fan on Grove Avenue, I'm delighted to hear that the regional public transportation plan includes a concept recommending GRTC absorb the 77 into the five as a new route 5A that would remove bus service from Grove and the Sand with the trade-off to connect U of R, West End, Carytown, BC Monroe Park, downtown and Whitcomb and Mosby on one continuous route. This makes so much more sense than the current situation. The ridership on the lower portion of the 77 near BCU is extremely low with most buses having none to one passenger while other areas of the city are in need of public transport coverage. Uh, so the 5A will provide that option to connect the Monroe Park and beyond uh, with real connectivity for riders. I welcome this development and hope this, the savings can be diverted to support other bus routes where there is demand. I would like to thank GRTC for taking on broader consultation with the community. Um, so, uh, Emily, did you want to comment on what the regional transportation plan and how this detour may end up playing a role in that, in that longer vision of, of what may come? Sure, yeah, as, um, as that commenter uh, described, there's an option um, in that regional plan to kind of combine what the 77 and the 5 would do. Um, so this would kind of be uh, the detour that we're um, planning to start in September um, would kind of just be a portion of that change. Um, and so being able to monitor it over a six month period will also give us kind of some idea of what we can expect with fully realizing that change. Um, so it will be a good kind of first measure 
um, of seeing what we might be able to expect um, if we were to put that, um, that kind of combined route into place. Right, and so many of our changes start incrementally uh, where we have to monitor and, and then make adjustments as we continue, uh, continue to grow. Thanks, Emily. Okay, this one's from Michael. As you know, many neighbors have requested to reconsider this route based on the ridership and negative impact on residents. I strongly support this change and thank GRTC for their responsiveness. Um, this is another one from Chris. I and many of my Grove Street neighbors applaud the proposed changes to Route 77. Experience has shown that the stops on Grove that will be out of use uh, had little use while taking up sorely needed parking spaces and causing buses to add to very congested residential streets. I feel this will be better for riders, giving them access to businesses on Main and Cary. Okay, I'm just gonna pop back in and make sure I haven't missed anything uh, happening live in the chat. Okay, seeing none, for the benefit of the attendees, I'll continue to, to read more um, of the comments that were coming in before the meeting. Okay, this one came in from GS. Uh, I fully support the current proposal to move the Route 77 off of Grove over to Cary and Maine. I have watched month after month as bus after bus passes back and forth down Grove, empty or with only one or occasionally two passengers. Uh, and I'm generally a supporter of public transit uh, and serves the public good and benefits of the community. But empty buses and pollution they generate do no one any good. I believe routing the buses down more commercial corridors like Maine and Cary makes far better sense for potential passengers in our community. Again, I'll be posting these in full uh, online and publicly if you wanna read them all. I just wanna remain sensitive to those of you who are live in the meeting and may have questions. Okay, question from Chesterfield County. Um, resident interested in when the updated material will be shared. Uh, so Ashley and I will be going out this summer uh, to ride and to visit some of the corner stores and destinations, restaurants, residences along the route uh, to make sure that they are aware of the changes. Uh, we'll also be working to update any printed uh, collateral uh, that we know is, is a little bit more popular along this route. Uh, to make sure that the number is updated from 111 to 3B and, and ensure that people have those resources available. We're also looking, and this is a, a project that Ashley's been working on as well, uh, to find new places for public timetable displays. So that'll be another way that we can get hard copy materials along the Route 111, which will become uh, the 3B into Chesterfield County. That's a great question. And that gets back to, I think, what Chad was asking about earlier about how do we distribute materials and make sure that people that, that live along that route will, will know. That's a great question. Okay, um, this is another one. Um, this one's from Peggy and Stephen. Uh, we are most gratified to recently learn of the proposed changes to Route 77. We have lived in the 1900 block of Grove Avenue since 1974. We have been directly impacted by the loss of parking on our block due to the Route 77 bus stop. Our block also includes Tabernacle Baptist Church and their child care center and nursery, which have restricted on-street parking, resulting in the loss of additional spaces. We have routinely observed the absence of passengers waiting for pickup or discharging from buses at the stop on the corner of the 1900 block uh, of Meadow Street. We believe passengers will be better served by being rerouted from these busy residential blocks to more commercial blocks of Maine and Cary. And certainly residents will benefit from reduced bus traffic and the restoration of the parking spaces. Um, so this was a comment that came in because they were unable to attend the meeting as well. Okay, uh, this one's from Judith. Uh, thank you for letting me know about the meeting. I am fully in support of these changes as a longtime resident. Uh, at 2004 Grove Avenue and affected by bus traffic and parking on both sides of the street. The proposal makes good sense and benefits both residents and riders, a win-win proposal. Thanks, Judith. Um, let's see, I think I'm almost through those who submitted in advance of the meeting, but let me double check if there aren't any live chat questions coming in. 
don't see any there in Ring Central, and don't see any fresh ones over on YouTube. Okay, very good. All right, and again, at any time, if you want to dip out, that's totally fine. We will be posting the video in its entirety. Uh, but for those of you who are still here and interested in hearing, um, let me continue sharing those comments that were submitted in advance of this meeting. This one's from Tom. Along with so many of our neighbors, I want to voice my support for the modifications to Route 77 that take the buses off Grove Avenue between Robinson and Harrison. This makes sense in that it gives a better proximity to numerous locations along Main and Cary, works better for traffic patterns and increases parking in a dense residential area. Thank you in advance for a sensible, sensitive, excuse me, reasonable and timely response to the list of concerns articulated by the neighborhood. Uh, then we also had another pre-submission. This one is from Beth and Matt. We appreciate the reevaluation of Bus Route 77, and we strongly support uh, the proposed amendments to this route. And then they resubmitted uh, initial comments uh, to the Board of Directors, which I will also be reading. Um, let's see. Oh, no, I read, read these at the June board meeting, uh, so those have already been publicly logged, but I will also include them in our public comments log for this meeting tonight. And that concludes all of the pre-submitted comments uh, before this meeting. Emily, I've been talking a lot. I wanted to give you an opportunity to jump in in case you had any other comments or wanted to, to respond to any, any of the pre-submitted comments that were shared. No, I think you covered everything. Thank you. Okay. Um, I know that in some of those pre-submitted comments, there were multiple references to the restoration of parking. And you mentioned in your presentation that when the Route 77 bus stops that are on Grove and the fan are covered, that that will also cover the no parking uh, restriction there. Did you get any guidance from the city of Richmond on what their parking rules are in that area, what they were, uh, once those stops are covered? There may be some, um, so at part of our bus stop signage has a no parking emblem on it. So that usually indicates the beginning of the no parking zone for a bus stop. Um, in some uh, select stops, we may also have like a no parking end sign, what we would call it, which would be just a traditional no parking sign that goes at the back end of the bus stop. Um, so we'll need to look to see if there are any of those out there that we need to cover. And that would be something that we'd need to talk with the city about. Um, but as far as the beginning of the uh, no parking signs, especially if, the, if it's a stop that doesn't even have one of those end um, markers, that will be completely covered by our um, the vinyl covers that we'll be placing. Okay, great. And because we know sometimes uh, when we have 1600 bus stops in the network in the past when we've covered a sign, it's possible that there might be uh, kids or others who try to remove the covers. If you see the covers removed, please don't hesitate to let us know and we'll get out there and put a replacement cover on as soon as possible. It, it's not uncommon that sometimes people take things um, for display uh, sometimes at home. We also have bus stop signs that disappear or parts that we have to replace. It's not uncommon, just let us know and we'll get right back out there and, and recover the bus stop. All right, well, um, I have not seen any fresh questions in the chat or on YouTube in a minute and we've already read through all the pre-submitted comments. So I am perfectly happy to restore 15 minutes of your evening to you, even though it's a rainy evening. Um, I will hang out here though in the meeting. I'm not gonna shut the meeting down in case there are any uh, questions that you may wanna ask in a smaller group setting. So I'll stay on here uh, to answer those questions for you. Um, and Emily will hang tight with me as well in case you need us to go back to, um, to a specific slide. Those slides are already posted at ridegrtc.com on the public meeting page. And again, if you are part of our uh, email group and you receive the email notification for this meeting, then you'll get an update from me here shortly uh, with the link to the meeting slide, the link to the video meeting itself on YouTube, and my contact information as well as the planning contact information in case you have any feedback. We really appreciate you taking some time to, to be with us this evening, listen to the updates, and please do uh, spread the word to your neighbors. Uh, we'll be out there though riding the 77 as well um, so that the riders are aware of the detour that's coming in a few months. 
uh, so that they won't know what the, so they'll be prepared whenever they see the bus turn uh, off of the normal route on Grove. Okay, Chad, I've got your info. I'm going to add you to my list. Thank you very much. All right, got gotcha, you added. Thanks, Chad. Okay, so we're just going to hang out. Thank you all. We appreciate you. Oh, I see Sven. Hey, Sven. <laughs> Sven has a quick question. Don't worry. Hey, we're not going I'll anywhere. I am so sorry for coming in at the last minute. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Go ahead. Fantastic. Really sorry about that, guys. Thanks so much for putting this together. Um, just had a quick question, and I apologize if this was already addressed earlier on in the program, but um, in relation to trash cans at the stops that exist now, uh, down Grove, uh, and, and obviously in relation to Route 20 as well, um, would all of those be removed as kind of part of the customary procedure with removal of stops? So Sven, we will, um, as we said, this is going to be a six month detour where we're going to continue to monitor uh, the ridership of the rest of the route. Um, we would wait until the kind of our monitoring period is over and we come up with a permanent solution before we would remove or relocate any amenities. Um, and that's just to save from the removal costs and then the reinstallation. Um, we would just continue monitoring and then once a final decision is made, then we'll follow through with whatever amenities need to be adjusted. Great. And, and those cans that are, that are in place during that time period will continue to be serviced, correct? Correct. So GRTC um, actually does not empty trash cans. We locate our trash cans along existing city of Richmond route. So yes, those trash cans will continue to be serviced um, by the city. Understood. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Ben. And again, we're not going anywhere. So if you're popping in and you have questions or or just want to, um, or you thought of something new, we're still going to be here. And hey, Beth, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't realize that, that you were here. I apologize, but I read um, that, that you had submitted comment, and I will make sure that it is included in, in our spreadsheet. So thank you. <laughs> All right, not seeing any other questions on YouTube. So I think the chat over on YouTube is doing okay right now. Okay, great. Thank you, Carrie. I couldn't get my mute off to say thank you. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> you're fine. We all have that same challenge. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Okay. Okay, Dawn, I see you had a, a question uh, just to me, so let me let me get back to you on that. Then I know that, that you had to log on a little late, but um, just want to make sure you know that the presentation is already available online. So actually, let me grab the hard URL so you can look at it um, while we're still here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. That is the direct PDF link to the presentation uh, materials. That's where you can see the maps. Um, for, for the detours uh, and the 77, there's several slides because Emily zoomed in in a couple of locations like retreat so that you could see which bus stops were, were still served on the detour. can hear the rain starting to really hit at my window. So, yeah, storm is upon us. 
All right, I still don't see any fresh questions in the chat and I don't see any over on YouTube. And it looks like our attendees have been dwindling. So, all right. Hey, Dexter, just hang tight with me a little bit longer, just in case we get some late, late guests who pop in, and then we can probably wrap this up in just a few minutes, both the live stream and the recording. I'm going to make sure that I've got all my fellow comments in here. Ready to go. Yep. Okay, great. Hey, Emily, well, I've, I've still got you <laughs> and I'm updating that public comment spreadsheet. Do you know if we did get any that popped into the planning comment prior to the meeting? Not that I'm aware of. I would have to check with Corey um, first thing tomorrow to see if, if anything comes in and in response to um, if anyone responds after the meeting. Okay. Yep. I knew he was monitoring up to the meeting and I didn't hear anything from him either. So. Um, okay, then that means what I'll do is after we close out the meeting, I will post the comments received up to and through the meeting, and then as we get more possibly over the month, I'll just add them and update that document online so that it's still fresh and, and complete. Okay, great. All right, Dexter, I think at 555, if you would like, we can conclude the YouTube stream. I have not seen any additional questions pop up there uh, or in our chat, and I've seen some folks departing, so we should be able to close out right on time. Okay, well, with that in mind, I will issue my thank you for those of you who have hung out with us until the end. Thanks everyone who watched on YouTube or perhaps you're watching this later. Thanks so much for taking the time to get this update. 
Uh, we will continue to provide updates on any service changes in advance. You can always check ridegrtc.com for meeting information or alerts that are high priority. Uh, if you are riding with us and need to know more day-to-day -day impacts, I encourage you to check out the Twitter account that we have. It's GRTC Transit. That's where you can get live updates on service impacts. Uh, we usually staff that Monday through Friday, not the entire day, but we're getting pretty close. Uh, we start posting alerts around 6 a, excuse me, 5 a.m. and offer those alerts until late morning. And then we have our next person who takes over on the baton uh, late morning and continues until 7 p.m. So we're getting really close to all day Twitter alert coverage. Those alerts also appear on the mobile app. Uh, and if you use track by text, then you would get those for the stop alerts as well. So thanks everybody for being with us. Don't ever hesitate to connect with me if you have an idea or feedback for how we can do things better. I really appreciate you connecting with us and helping us serve you better. Have a great night. And thanks, Emily. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, great. And Dexter, I just made sure to save the chat. And once I close, I know it will um, save the recording.